watching coverage you can count on. WICS News Channel 20 Midday. Today's top story. It took more than seven hours, but a Springfield man was found guilty of murder. Good afternoon to you. Lawrence Green was found guilty of first-degree murder just after 7 o'clock last night. Green got into a fight with Joe Cummins in the Springfield apartment building uh, back in February. Green stabbed Cummings to death in the neck. Attorneys say that with more than seven hours of deliberations, it's obvious that the jury took its job seriously. I think it was a complicated case, and uh, there are a lot of issues involved, and I think the jury, again, took their time, went through the, all the issues we covered in the argument, and uh, came up with a proper, proper verdict. I'm not faulting the jury. They, they obviously did a very conscientious uh, job. Um, it's just not the, uh, the result that, that we expected. Jurors could have found Green guilty of lesser charges, either second-degree murder or involuntary manslaughter, but again, they found Lawrence Green guilty of first-degree murder last night. A local group is applauding the president's directive to improve hate crimes reporting. The Reverend David Morgansay is the pastor of Faith Eternal Church. Most members of his church are gay and lesbian. Morgansay says that the more than hate crimes go unreported, the more needs to be done to educate the public. Springville police say only nine hate crimes have been reported in the city so far. The victim needs to identify to the police that they believe they're the victim of a hate crime. But until we can get into the mind of the offender and determine what his motivation was, again, it's difficult to prove that it was, in fact, a hate crime. A bill making its way through Congress would expand the federal hate crimes law to include sexual orientation, gender, and disabilities. And that is already the law in Illinois. Parking problems are causing some grumbling from downtown Springfield businesses, and now aldermen have been asked to help. Right now, there is no time limit for delivery vehicles that park in one spot, and that's often right in front of a business, which leaves uh, customers no place to park. It causes some traffic problems, traffic flow when they're parked there. Uh, uh, people uh, tend to, to not be able to get in and out of alleys uh, properly, and, and it tends to be a traffic hazard. At next Tuesday's uh, city council meeting, Alderman will look at a proposal that would uh, put time limits in place for many of those parking spots. Two big donations will help students at Lincoln Land Community College, National City Bank, and Memorial Medical Center Foundation, each donated at $150,000. The money will be used to support Lincoln Land Community College's nursing and allied health programs. Half of it will be used to provide scholarships to nursing and allied health students, and the other half will be used to uh, develop the areas on campus in our Millennium Building that will be used to train our nursing staff. A permanent endowment fund will be set up with these donations. Well, it's a beautiful day out there, a little on the chilly side, but yeah. it's time for it, isn't it? Kind of a hint of fall out mm -hmm. there this afternoon. Temperatures only in the 60s right now. We do have mostly sunny skies. 66 in Springfield, 61 in Decatur and Bloomington, 66 in Champaign, Peoria at 64 degrees. The satellite and radar picture combined shows clear skies, although you don't see those fair weather cumulus clouds that we have out there right now, allowing for a mostly sunny sky. We're going to continue to see lots of sunshine throughout the day today off to our east into parts of Michigan, Indiana, and into Ohio, seeing some widely scattered showers. The ones in Michigan and Indiana are lake effect showers. We're not going to see any wet weather today. Your Storm Team 20 forecast for this afternoon. Mostly sunny and cool. We'll have a high of 69 degrees with north winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And coming up in just a few moments, I'll have a look at the weekend forecast. All right. Thank you, Kevily. Well, the Olympics are underway and we'll preview the opening ceremonies as midday continues. Folks who work for a living depend on their paychecks to pay their bills. But if you're injured in an accident and can't work, the expenses pile up. You need help. With so many attorneys available, how do you choose one to explain and protect your rights? At Walter Beeman & Lynch, we know personal injury law. We teach other attorneys, get referrals from other lawyers, and our track record speaks for itself. If you're injured, call us. Don't settle for less. You're watching Don Hickman and meteorologist Kevin Lee Douglas. This is News Channel 20 Midday. The eyes of the world are on Sydney, Australia as the Summer Olympics get underway. The opening ceremonies kick things off early this morning. Bill Wirtz takes a look at some of the pictures there. The opening ceremonies began in Sydney as dozens of riders carried flags bearing the five-ring logo of the Olympics. 
More than 110,000 people packed the Olympic Stadium as more than 12,000 performers helped stage the more than three-hour ceremony. G'day, g'day was one signature song of the people of Australia, host for the new millennium's first Olympic Games. International Olympic Committee President Juan Antonio Samarach was on hand presiding over his final games. More than 10,000 athletes from 200 countries made their way into the stadium, which of course included the Americans, the largest assembly of athletes coming to this year's games. The United States team entered the stadium in a wash of red, white, and blue, carrying flags and waving to the crowd. Of political significance, athletes from North and South Korea marched under one banner and one uniform. Unified is just Korea, holding hands and receiving a standing ovation from the capacity crowd. The biggest ovation, though, was of course reserved for the host Australians, who tossed small yellow toy kangaroos into the crowd as they chanted, Aussies, Aussies. And finally, the Olympic cauldron was lit by Olympic runner Kathy Freeman, a native aboriginal. And with the lighting, the games are officially underway. I'm Phil Wurz for NBC News. And you can see complete coverage of the opening ceremonies at 6.30 this evening here on News Channel 20. And we have a quick Olympic programming note to tell you about due to the 2000 Summer Games. Our 6 o'clock news will air at 5.30, right after first news at 5. That schedule begins on Monday. And News Channel 20 night side will air at around 11 o'clock, and that begins tonight. And some good news for fans of NBC's daytime dramas, Passions, and uh, Days of Our Lives will air at their normal times throughout the Olympics. Flu season is right around the corner, which means it's time to get your flu shot. There is a problem, though. The vaccine is not expected to be available until the end of October at the earliest. That's just days before the flu season begins. The Center for Disease Control also says fewer supplies will be available this year, both the result of production problems. Normally it takes two weeks to, to work, and so we feel we'll be fine. Uh, if, the va if the flu comes earlier, um, we may have some problems, but uh, we're, we feel our targeted dates and times are in, in pretty good shape yet. Hospitals, nursing homes, and public health departments will first administer the vaccine to those most at risk. Local AIDS groups are hoping to cash in on a new national initiative to get more people tested for AIDS. The Surgeon General has joined the program called Peer to Peer. It was started in Los Angeles and encourages those getting HIV testing to bring a friend to get tested as well. A major drug company has put up a million dollars to set up the outreach centers in 10 cities a year. Springfield is not in line for direct support, but officials here still hope to cash in that we can model this or that we can access um, the information and the materials to put it in place even though we wouldn't a a be able to access the funds directly from Glasgow Welcome. And Crin says the biggest challenge is getting word out in the African-American community where 48 percent of AIDS cases are found. Another step forward for the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum. The city of Springfield has completed the purchase of two buildings on the site. They are scheduled to be demolished next month to make way for construction of the $115 million complex. The spokesman says public feedback has been positive on the revised, more traditional design for the library and the museum. I think it fits into the city well. It's well within scale. And now we're able to start talking about exactly what the stone would be and how we're going to do streetscape around that project. So I think everybody's going to be very pleased. And Sim says the city is negotiating to acquire the two final land parcels needed for that project. Just ahead, we'll have the senior report and then Kevin's Storm Theme 20 forecast. Did you know that the psyllium fiber in Metamucil can ferment and produce excess gas? Citrusella is different. Its fiber won't produce excess gas. And did you know that people prefer the taste of Citrusell over Metamucil? Two to one. Metamucil or 100% soluble Citrusell. No wonder. Citrusell. Don't just have a regular day. Have a great day. Through 400 years of clashes and battles, Conflicts in all-out war. Men and women have risked their lives to save them. Perhaps with the hope that one day, you might be able to see them in more peaceful surroundings. The Royal Lipizzaner Stallions. 
The center, Saturday, September 23rd, 2 and 7.30 p.m. Tickets on sale now. Your truck's appearance says a lot about you. Say it with style using custom wheels and accessories from Truck and Specialties in Springfield. You'll find a huge selection of Lear toppers with a full range of optional features made just for your truck, whether it's a GM, Ford, Dodge, or import. And you can keep your truck looking great with a Permatech spray-in bed liner and the best cleaners and polishes available. For quality service you can count on, count on Truck and Specialty at 2511 South Grand East in Springfield. Today's Senior Report is brought to you by Staub Funeral Home. On today's Senior Report, Doris Winkler introduces us to the newest option for active older adults. Ida Bell plays the piano only when she's happy, so I guess you could say Ida Bell is happy these days. But why? Ida Bell lost her husband six years ago, and she moved out of her four-bedroom home into a senior apartment community. But to those who think that sounds depressing, you can just think again. Annabelle doesn't look it, but she's 80 years old, so taking care of a four-bedroom house was sort of a pain in the neck. And besides, Annabelle is leery of living by herself. We hear so much on the TV, the radio, about the people that are going around molesting older people and raping them too for that matter so lucky for idabelle she was able to find a community even though it's for seniors that doesn't make her feel old and creepy and she's not frightened anymore it's secure it's quiet and the buildings look fresh and up to date in fact it seems the building industry is finally learning to understand the needs of older americans but there are some very important things to look for when you're choosing a senior housing community, such as quality of management, and that's more important than you'd think. For tips on senior housing, send me a stamp, self-addressed envelope. I'm Doris Winkler. It's the Senior Report. Well, last Friday, we were out at the golf course having a lot of fun, and the okay. temperature was, <laughs> what, hovering around 90. It wasn't that warm last 85, Friday. 85. Okay, well, about 85. Six and a half. I had the, my own meteorologist on, <laughs> on the course out there. So <laughs> yeah. Good. Big change today, though, yeah. Don. Temperatures only Feels in the good, 60s. It? Yeah, kind of a hint of fall out there. Temperatures across the Midwest still even in the 50s. Most of Minnesota, Wisconsin, northern Illinois, Michigan over into Indiana and Ohio in the 50s. No, it's not fall yet. Officially, it is still summertime, and we are going to be dealing with almost fall-like conditions as we head into the weekend, but we will start to warm things back up. I think by the end of the weekend, we'll be looking at near-normal temperatures, but very quiet across the nation no rain to be found across the central U.S., but it is a stormy day in the northeast, even some flooding going on. Well, that's all associated with that same cold front, an area of low pressure that passed through central Illinois yesterday morning, giving us the showers and thunderstorms. Today, high pressure is sitting off to our northeast, and it's this area of high pressure originated up in Canada. It's going to drift its way south and eastward over the weekend. It is going to give us a nice weekend. A cool start because we have clockwise flow around high pressure, which means our winds are out of the north right now. And that is pulling in some of that cooler air. But once it starts to drift off to our south and to the east, the winds will shift off to the south and a bit of a warm-up in store. I think by Monday, temperatures, our highs are going to be back up around 80 degrees. But as you can see by the satellite picture, just a few clouds in the sky, not bad. Most areas reporting mostly sunny skies. We have a few of those fair-weather cumulus clouds, those popcorn-type clouds that have popped up within the last hour or so. We'll see those throughout the day, but not really hampering any of our sunshine. It looks to be a delightful afternoon. A bit on the cool side, though. Radar pictures dry here in Illinois, but parts of Michigan, western Michigan and into northern Indiana, this is lake effect showers right now, and they're pushing southward. This will not affect our weather any for today. Very delightful out there now. 66 degrees only in Springfield. Our dew point is at 44. Our humidity is 45 percent. We have northwest winds at 13 miles per hour, and the barometer is at 30.19 and it is currently rising. 66 in Decatur and Champaign, 63 for Bloomington, Peoria at 64 degrees, 69 down in St. Louis, and only 60 degrees in Chicagoland. Very nice afternoon, and our highs this afternoon 
are only going to go into the upper 60s. Some areas might even go into the low 70s, but our normal daytime high this time of year is 79 degrees. I do think we'll probably be running about 10 degrees below that for the day. And a cool night shaping up. Our lows are probably going to fall into the lower 40s for tonight. Area of high pressure still in control for tomorrow. It pushes its way south and eastward, basically just giving us another sunny day, another nice day for tomorrow. Temperatures will be a few degrees warmer. You can expect your highs tomorrow to be in the low 70s across central Illinois. Your Storm Team 20 forecast for this afternoon. Mostly sunny skies and cool. We'll have a high of 69 degrees with north winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear skies and chilly, low of 42 degrees. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and a very nice day for your Saturday. 72 degrees for tomorrow with light and variable winds. And your extended forecast. Sunshine again on Sunday. Temperatures in the mid-70s. Again, I said that gradual warming trend. I think up near 80 by Monday with partly sunny skies. And then Tuesday, we do have a chance for maybe a few scattered showers and storms. But a very nice weekend. Highs only in the 70s. Lows falling into the 40s. And turn off the air conditioners. All right. Kimberly, thank you. Have a nice weekend. You too. All right. In just a moment, we'll talk with Craig Shermerhorn of AG Edwards and get some financial and investment advice. During Bergner's Goodwill Sale, bring in any winter items and we'll donate them to Goodwill. And you'll receive a $10 certificate. Bergner's Goodwill Sale, going on now. The Persians are back. The embargo has been lifted, and at the Persian Rug Center, we are happy to again stock authentic Iranian rugs. Kum, Tabriz, Bijar, Isfahan, Saruk, Bakhtiari, Abadeh, Kilam. To celebrate this momentous occasion, we are offering incredible savings on all of our new Iranian rugs. This special sale lasts one week only. Hurry in for best selection. Oak Express isn't a typical furniture store, and our home entertainment centers aren't typical either. For starters, we have 37 styles, from TV stands to incredible home theater walls, and all of them are crafted from real wood, not imitation. What's more is they all come assembled and ready to take home immediately, and getting them home is even easier with our six-month free financing offer. Oak Express, where you stay because our warehouse is our showroom. 2901 Wabash, across from the White Oaks Mall in Springfield. I'm not going to become one of those old men who sit in lawn chairs on driveways and regret adventures I never took. Green Audi on Wabash. Craig Shermerhorn, A.G. Edwards, with us today, as he is on most Fridays. Craig, there seems to be a feeling out there among some people, investors and oracles and people much wiser than I am, that we may be heading for a drop in the stock market, that there's some, a certain amount of fear out there. Can you allay those fears for us today? <laughs> I'll try. I'll do my best. I mean, the market's been acting sort of erratic here lately, hasn't it? We it's had a good, been real good sloppy. August, but uh, it's uh, September leaves something to be desired. Yeah, you know, our problem started back in April when the uh, the market got got crazy back this spring. It was just uh, ahead of itself and and kind of crazy about the internet stocks. It peaked in April, and ever since then, it's just been real sloppy, Don. Mm -hmm. We recovered a bit in uh, August. I think August was up something like six percent, and since then, it's gone back to its sloppy ways. There have been a few articles written saying, whoa, we might be like 1974 and the market fell dramatically all over, all over again. Mm -hmm. But boy, I don't think there's anything like that in the cards at all. We have very unique circumstances. The last time we fell big was 26 years ago in 1974, and that's when the market was its worst decline then since 1929. But back then, we had uh, oil prices quadrupled that year. We had a, a real loss of consumer uh, confidence. There were shortages of everything. If you recall, people were moving money into hard assets. Mm -hmm. uh, there were shortages of almost every commodity you could get. We had huge inflation, huge high interest rates. We don't have any of those things now. We have a very strong economy right now. We have surpluses of most, most products. Uh, we also back then had uh, products, prices, rising faster than income. So people felt like they were getting squeezed. And now that, that's, in fact, not the case. Inflation is under control. There's really no parallel you can draw at all from any economic or, or, or event that happened, really. Then with a good economy and there's no parallel to draw, then I, I suppose the obvious question is, why isn't the market doing better than what, <laughs> what it's doing? Although, when you look at the, uh, the Dow averages, 
it's what, over 11,000 already? That's right. It's over 11,000. And certainly mm -hmm. after the very outsized gains we've had for the last five or six years, there's been a lot of analysts saying for a long time we're due for a year mm -hmm. when not much happens and things can kind of play catch up. That, that wouldn't surprise any analyst to have a year just be a dull year. And in fact, the year's not over with yet. It may be just fine. And we may well be into several years of more normal returns, more 10 to 15 percent returns and not the outsized gains we had last year. For example, last year, uh, the NASDAQ index went up 86 percent in one year. Well, you don't expect that kind of stuff to continue. Right. You expect it to uh, slow down a bit of reality, maybe go down the following year after a turn of that magnitude. Craig, an Illinois-based company, is in the news today, McDonald's, mm -hmm. which is a very popular stock. Uh, had some revenue problems. Stock yeah. is down, what, $26, $27 a share now from a high of around $50, $48, right. $50 dollars it's really uh, collapsed uh, over the last 12 months. What's going on with McDonald's? Uh, I think it's a symptom of what's in the market. And what's really happened in the market is it almost doesn't matter what's happened to earnings. People have lost confidence. Earnings can be strong and confidence can be strong, or earnings can be strong, confidence can be weak, or lots of permutation combinations. But right now, the confidence of McDonald's seems to be down. Uh, actually, I think it looks like a pretty darn good point for a patient person to start taking a serious look at it because it's become, it, it's changed. It used to be a growth stock with outsized earnings and an outsized price earnings ratio and outsized price. Now it's become a very moderately priced stock at a price earnings ratio less than the market as a whole. And we've talked before about the growth mm -hmm. stocks versus value stocks. And here's one that's kind of morphed from a uh, uh, growth stock to value stock. And right now, I think it looks attractive. But what really caught it though was the European currencies have been strong. They get over 50, excuse me, have been weak rather. They get over 50% of the earnings uh, outside the United States. And as foreign currencies have been weak, that's hurt their earnings comparison. Their constant dollar sales, if you take the currency out of it, their revenues and sales have been pretty doggone good. But put currencies into it and they're hurting right now, that won't last forever. It, uh, we have just a few seconds. Is this the kind of situation now where Warren Buffett might look at this and say, Maybe I'll, it's time to buy a big chunk of McDonald's. Sure, I have no idea if he's buying this one, but it's exactly the type of thing he'd be looking at. Right. And what he would do is buy it and be patient. Mm -hmm. He would say, let's buy some, let's wait, if it's down some more, I'll buy some more. And I'll wait around and I'll eventually be right. It fits his uh, buy Gillette and buy Coca-Cola type of image. Sure does. See you next week. Look forward to it. Thanks, Craig. Midday continues in just a moment. See you. Friday at 3 on News Channel 20. Spotlight 20 takes a look at Lincoln Land with Betsy Moore. Hi, Reverend David Biltman joins us today at Convocation coming to Springfield. Right, at the Prairie Capital Convention Center on September 30th, beginning at 8.30 and going till 3 p.m. We will have a lot of fun. This will be an exciting time, like a family reunion, and uh, we just uh, are looking forward to it. Dr. Barry, our synodical president, will... Uh, preach at our closing service beginning at 2.10 in the afternoon. Dr. Patelko, our fourth vice president of the Synod, will be here and will keynote at the, in the morning session. And then we'll have 25 different workshops pertaining to family life, uh, church life, and uh, different other subjects. And uh, people will have an opportunity to choose in four different breakout sessions. All right, like this to. is coming up September 30th. Right. All right, at the Prairie Capital Convention Center. And if they want more information, they can call my office, 793-1802. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Well, this week's Golden Apple Award goes to a second grade teacher at Hazedell Elementary School here in Springfield. Kathy Long was nominated in part for her ability to develop self-esteem and self-confidence in her students. Kathy says the most challenging part of her job is meeting each child's needs when everyone learns at a different pace. But she says it's a challenge she loves. Well, I think teaching is probably one of the most rewarding occupations because every day is a different day and every class that you have has their own expectations. And I just like to try to make every child feel successful in their own way. Kathy Long was nominated by student Chelsea Day, parent Martha Paget, and teacher Lynn Wagey. If you have a teacher you'd like to nominate, send your nomination to News Channel 20, 2680 East Cook Street in Springfield, Illinois. 62703. Oh, three. three, I think, something like that. It's three. Okay. Nice afternoon out there, a little bit on the cool side, kind of a taste of fall as we head into the weekend, but we will start to warm back up to near 80, it looks like, by Monday. Next chance of rain is Tuesday. All right. And that is our news for now. 
We will have more for you coming up this afternoon at 5. Join us then. In the meantime, thank you and make it a good day. Today's closed captioning is made possible by Shaw Furniture Gallery in Taylorville, where you'll find beautiful furniture built just for you. For over 150 years,